there's too many dogs and too few homes. We pull a lot of dogs from ACT, the Philadelphia City Shelter, and it's a high kill shelter. Uh, I primarily foster for Diamonds in the Rough. I have in the past fostered for the Delaware County SPCA, and I do plan on fostering for them again. Fostering now, probably close to two and a half years. I, I wish more people would step up and do it. It is such a wonderful experience. I guess my first foster, I don't want to say it seemed like a job, but it was kind of more task oriented. I was a little more nervous having, a, you know, a dog I didn't know in my house. Becoming a dog foster is a lot of work because uh, you have to dedicate a lot of your time and effort to fostering. Fostering is not, I wouldn't say the easiest thing in the world, but it's, it's one of the most rewarding. This is Mark Key. He's between the ages of two and three. We're not 100% sure. He's a pit mix. Currently, Mark, he's still waiting for applications for him to get sent in. and He's a good dog, so he'll find a good home soon. This is Miller, and Miller's my one and only foster failure so far. A foster failure is when you foster a dog and you just fall so in love that you have to keep it. You can't, you just can't bear to give them up. I get to experience a lot so far as a dog foster. Like how to become a better dog owner, how to treat my animals better, and. Like how to, how to care for animals better in general. Because this big goofy idiot needs love. I've become more appreciative of dogs over time. It feels nice participating or even just being effective for people who want a dog instead of buying them from like a pet shop, from like a puppy farm. Like we get actual dogs who need, who need as much love as, the, as some of the puppies. But everybody kind of goes for puppies. Like it's, it's pretty normal but to like pick like a semi older dog who's just looking for a place to, to love people. And because I get to see, I get to have like have dogs in my house, not have to necessarily commit. I mean, I have my own dog now, but being able to just have like a new dog every so often is kind of nice. It's a refreshing experience. So the fosters now are more like immediately kind of family pets as opposed to kind of just something that I'm taking care of for a little while. Um, I've been really lucky and for the most part I had fantastic dogs. The fosters weren't allowed upstairs and then we broke that rule and then the fosters weren't allowed to sleep in the bed and then we broke that rule. I think I'm more empathetic to what dogs go through you know from the shelter environment and to see that gratefulness. I mean it's it's amazing when a dog first comes to your house that enthusiasm that they show, and sometimes that hesitancy like, wait, I'm, I'm allowed up on this nice soft sofa. It's so new to them to have that environment and just to kind of see them flourish. A lot of times their behavior, it's not the animal's fault. It's the environment they were in previously. A foster can be a great first step to know that the dog fits in your house. I wish more people would step up and foster. It's so rewarding. Like, you know, Miller, he most likely would not have made it out of ACT alive. He knew his commands. He was just a sweetheart snuggler. But he's a pit in a city shelter with, you know, very intense eyes. And he's a strong dog. And he just, you know, got overlooked. The fact is, is... Pits are euthanized at such an astronomical rate compared to all the other breeds. Thousands of dogs as wonderful as him are put to sleep every single year. So I have a resident dog and she has loved every foster we've ever had. And every time a foster leaves, Lily will run all over looking for the foster and then she'll get depressed. I think I get fosters as much for Lily as I do for me. <laughs> He's my good boy.